Hi there, and welcome to the Traction Walkthrough student version. In this walkthrough, you will learn how to sign in, create your Traction account, and learn all you need to know about playing Traction. If you have already registered and logged in, please skip to the two minute mark of this video. We'll start by going to www.experientialsimulations.com and click on the Access button. Once you are on the Login and Register page, please go to the Payment section and complete your Traction payment. If your professor has already given you a payment code, please skip this step. Once you have completed your payment, return to the Login and Register page and click on Student Registration. In this section, you will be able to create your Traction account. You will enter a username and password that you will use to log into your Traction account. If your professor has given you a payment code, please enter it here. Shortly after you have created your account, you will get a verification email. In this email, click on Verify Account. Once you have submitted your payment and created your student account, it will take us less than 24 hours to verify your account. Once your account is verified, return to the Login and Register page. Your professor will let you know which version of Traction he would like you to log into. Once you have logged in, enter the group passcode that your professor has provided for you. You are now able to access the Traction user manuals and YouTube videos. You are now ready to play Traction. Welcome to Traction, the startup simulation game that combines the latest in academic knowledge with practitioner experience in a unique knowledge module. Traction is a turn-based game consisting of 18 turns. Traction is divided into two phases, pre- and post-revenue phases. In the pre-revenue phase, the game is focused on aligning with the customer, hiring the executive team, developing the product, and obtaining funding. In the post-revenue phase, the game is focused on building the company structure and going to market. At the end of each turn, players are presented with the boardroom. Market news gives information on events occurring outside the company. The information can be vague, in which the player must interpret the information. In a startup, information uncertainty is a constant. The notifications section gives updates on the previous turn decisions. On the top right corner is the month of the game and a square with six internal squares. Pressing on the square provides a pop-up panel where the player can access the turn schedule and game frequently asked questions. In addition, metrics and data about the game are available, including funding and share allocation. The game metrics include the composite traction score, which takes into account all activities in the game and individual scores which indicate the player's alignment with the market, the level of interest in the market for the product, or adoption rate, and the ability of the company to evolve and adapt to changing market conditions. On the left is the vertical navigation bar. Not all game screens are available in the pre-revenue phase. For purposes of this video, the game is showing all screens including the post-revenue screens. Only the first six screens are available in the pre-revenue phase. To succeed in traction, players must consider that the actions taken in one part of the game could affect the results in another part of the game. The various modules of the game can be accessed in any order and revisited during the turn. During this video, we will suggest items to consider for each module. We will start with the Market View screen. In this screen, the players can decide whether they want to align their product development with the customer. Generally, the more alignment we have, the more desirable the product will be in the market. Please note that alignment must be continuous to prevent the score from declining. In the funding screen, players can attempt to access a variety of funding sources. Friends and family, lean startup, and government grants don't require shares. However, 
players have a limited number of times such funding can be attained. Venture capitalists and angel investors can be sought after the product has been developed. Throughout the game, many aspects follow a likelihood approach. In other words, performing certain actions increases the likelihood that an event might occur but doesn't bring that likelihood to certainty. In the case of investors, having a good management team and the product done increases the likelihood of attainment of investor funding. In addition, intellectual property protection and testing of the product or service tends to increase investor interest. In the team section, players attempt to put together a team that works well together and has desirable attributes. Some types of people don't work well together, and in general, a diverse skill set tends to result in a stronger team. In the development screen, players are developing a generic hardware and software product. It can be thought of as a printer or a cell phone or any similar device. Players have eight components that must be developed and can decide whether to build them cheaply and quickly or not. Building the product quickly provides the player the opportunity to enter the market in the post-revenue phase quicker but could result in an inferior product. Such an approach could see a player in the market by turn 5 to 6, while a higher quality approach might see them in the market after turn 10. Once in the market, players can earn revenue. The chosen approach to development can affect the ability to pass product service tests, attainment of intellectual property, and the product's revenue in the market. In the testing screen, players can test their products which increases its attractiveness. Testing can fail, thus jeopardizing the ability to obtain intellectual property. In the IP protection screen, players can decide to develop the legal structure of their company and then attempt to obtain IP protection for their product. Obtaining legal protection increases the company's attractiveness to investors and customers. The following screens are only accessible in the post-revenue phase. Upon completing the product and having the management team on board, players will be given the option to go to market. In the Partners screen, players can decide to enhance their distribution structure by teaming with external partners. In the Department screen, players can implement their internal organizational structure including their promotional ability and their processes. For the processes, the emphasis is on creativity and innovation. Finally, within this screen, players can implement their supply chain and distribution structure. With product standards, players align their product with prevailing standards, perhaps becoming the market standard. In the last screen, Players can implement different bonus modules, increasing their adoption rate in the market. Of other interest might be the Experiential Simulations web series, where we feature professors discussing experiential learning in their classroom settings. Also our tournaments. Students may be interested in competing in the Experiential Simulation tournaments. And remember, students are always able to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and WordPress. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at experientialsimulations.com or ask a question to our online site consultant by clicking on the link located at the bottom of any webpage at www dot experientialsimulations.com